I wish all games allowed us to loot by violently sucking up everything of use. It's my favorite thing about Atomic Heart, but today we're gonna to go through a bunch of tips and tricks and things that you should know for playing Atomic Heart surviving this robot apocalypse. Oh, let's go. Let me know in the comments your own tips and tricks so that we can all help each other out. We'll start with, I think maybe one of the hardest things in the game is the open world and surviving that open world. So after, I would say maybe three to four hours, depending on how fast you go through the initial tutorial stuff, you will unlock the main open world hub. And this hub will act as essentially where you'll travel around and explore. And most of the main missions will take place at like, essentially like the opposite part of the map that you are currently on, right? Like it forces you to travel through this open world. Now, something that's difficult about this open world is that every robot that you destroy, it will automatically begin repairing almost as soon as you have have destroyed it. Now, an interesting thing here is that you can kill a robot and then collect its resources. It'll get rebuilt, kill it again, collect its resources. So it's a good way to like get resources because of that, but it can get really frustrating, especially if you get spotted by a camera and it will start a level two alarm. Now, the level two alarms are pretty easy to escape from, essentially just like run away and the robots will quickly lose sight of you and lose you. But you may be interested in knowing that you can actually disable this whole mechanic for a period of time. So in these open world areas, now the the game will teach you about the hawks and initially you'll have to like get up on a hawk to go fight a boss but in these other areas except for the first area for some reason you can't turn it off in the first area but in the other areas if you activate these hawks and override them you can disable the cameras and the robots in that area for a period of time so essentially how you do this is the same way that you get access to that first hawk in the first area is you find the control room for that specific area where that big circle is on the map there'll be like a hawk and around that area will be the control room you'll need to get into a camera and then unlock that control room go to the control room and then essentially override it and it will disable the hawk for i reckon it's about 20 minutes or so i'm not sure of the specific amount of time what this will mean is that robots in the area they won't repair and the robots that you haven't killed will essentially just be deactivated unless you attack them once you attack them they'll fight back but until that point they'll just stand there you can walk around them and walk around that pretty much entire area free of robots and free of cameras. This is only temporary and it will just randomly turn back on. So you do need to just be mindful, I guess, of how long you're spending in these areas and just be aware that robots will come back. But it's really valuable, especially when you reach a new area to do this straight away, just disable the robots. You can still kill the robots for their resources, but it just allows you to move freely in that area without having to worry about it and collect any resources, chests, etc. that you find out in the world and not have to worry about the cameras or the robots spotting you. And you can disable the cameras just by, you know, shooting them or or even using your shock to just disable them for a period of time. Moving on to some combat tips. Now, as you're fighting pretty much everything out in the open world and in the different various dungeons and centers that you do explore, you really wanna focus on melee and the polymer, like love powers, as well as the energy weapons, as these are all resources that regenerate over time or say with melee weapons, you know, they don't actually break. So because you won't be wasting ammunition by using these, it's best to use them just for the general like trash mobs and robots that you do see around. You know, and conserve that ammunition for some of the bigger, more intense fights. And basically it's like your last resort, right? You know, if you're in a situation where you're like, oof, this is really tough, and you pull out like a shotgun or whatever weapon you like, and then you can use those in those situations. You can craft ammunition and the further you get in the game, you know, ammo becomes less of a hard resource to come by, but just while you're exploring and stuff, it's better to use these weapons and things that are going to automatically regenerate over time. So you're not wasting them, you know, you don't want to be just like pumping all of your shotgun rounds into just the general trash mobs and then need it for a boss fight that just happens to be around the corner. You know what I mean? It is also possible and the game does tell you that you can stealth into encounters and stealth take down enemies but honestly i would probably avoid it because it's hard because of the QTE event that you have to do just to take out the enemies. It's also hard because the enemies don't really loop around in a way that's simple to be able to stealth take them down. You can take them down via stealth when they are deactivated in like the open world areas once you've disabled the hawk and they'll just get you the resources without having to invest in anything. It's probably the only time I would really use it and in some other minor situations but for the most part I wouldn't really worry too much about it. It's also worth talking about the cartridges that you can put onto your weapons as well. Now these will add elemental effects to those weapons, whether it be fire, electricity, or shock. Now combine this with the polymer jet and you'll get a massive increase to the elemental damage that you will do on the enemy, which is really valuable to have. But also just doing these effects is important. So before you enter combat with a new enemy or even in combat, you can do this. You can bring up your scanner and leave it on the target for a little while and it'll register like their name as well as their resistances and their weaknesses. So you can then target specific elemental types or say some enemies might be a little more immune to melee damage versus 
just range damage. So you can focus on that type of damage for that enemy. And all the enemies have this, including bosses. So you can pay attention to say, okay, I need to use this on this kind of enemy, this on this type of enemy. And you can actually adjust your play style based on that. And the cartridges are super important to put on your weapons for these elemental effects that you can put on. And you can craft these different cartridges as well. So you can actually make sure you've got these available. So you can keep that elemental damage up as it does significantly improve your combat effectiveness is using these cartridges and the elemental damage bonuses that you can get. Speaking of the weapons and the kit and everything, your weapons and upgrades are one of the critical parts to your survival. Now, I have made an entire video based around the skills in Atomic Heart, breaking down the skills and the glove abilities and all of that good information. So if you're interested in that stuff, go and watch that video or open it in another tab to watch after you finish this video. Did you do it yet? Okay, at a Nora machine, you can upgrade your weapons and craft new ones with a number of materials that you find by killing robots and looting. Now, if you're looking for specific resources, you can click the little question mark and it'll give you more information about that material and where you'll likely find it, like what enemy will likely drop it. So if you're looking for something specific, you can try and find that enemy out in the world. It's also worth mentioning here that, you know, you can craft your own weapons and upgrades and all that kind of stuff, but dismantling things you aren't using or will plan to never use again is extremely valuable to get a ton of resources resources back that you've invested into a weapon. So essentially, like if you fully upgraded a melee weapon, for example, then you're like, ah, I don't want to use this anymore. And you can actually just dismantle it, get tons of those resources back to then invest into your new melee weapon, as especially some of the later melee weapons you'll get down the line from different blueprints are significantly better than the first one that you do have. So dismantling, you can get those resources back to then invest in some of the different weapons or melee weapons that you might actually be using the further you get into the game. And upgrading those weapons is a critical part of your success. And spending time to find the different blueprint upgrades for these weapons as well not the ones that you get randomly from just like looting chests and you randomly get blueprints but actually going to these testing grounds so a lot of the weapons will have a particular upgrade or variant whatever it may be that you need to go to a testing ground to unlock now these testing grounds are kind of just like puzzly dungeony things that you can go to that are completely side areas but by going to them they'll have four or five different weapon blueprints that are unique and you can only get them in those areas so if you're using a weapon whether it be a melee weapon or a ranged weapon that you really like and you really want to upgrade it's worth going to these areas and doing these testing grounds they're not too long in most encounters like the puzzle is probably the longest part in the ones that i've done but they are well worth doing to upgrade your favorite weapons in increasing their overall damage or potential that they can do the these resources are worth collecting and actually investing into. If you're curious about what weapons you should use, I honestly don't think there's a right answer to this or a wrong answer. Really, I've been using the shotgun, the assault rifle, and the pistol as my main ranged weapons, as well as always having a powerful melee weapon. I also think having some sort of an energy weapon, whether it be the pistol or something else, just so you can use an energy weapon. Now, if you're going to use an energy weapon as your main weapon, you want to invest in the energy management skills because that will increase the overall you know, energy that you have stored in your suit so that you can translate that into actual actually using that as ammunition, but it's really up to you and what weapons that you want to use and what works best for you. But what I found is having a shotgun for close range, something like an assault rifle for bosses and long range, and then a pistol just to like pick off things when, you know, I don't want to waste any of the big heavy hitting ammo like shotguns or assault rifles, but there is like big heavy hitters like the fat boy and stuff as well. But I am curious. Let me know in the comments down below what weapon you're primarily using. Thank you guys for watching this video till the end. Thank you to our members for supporting the channel. My name is Norza and I hope you have a great day.